You're listening to Houston Weekend Magazine. My name is Mystic Matthews, and joining me on the show today is Karen Obmasis, President and CEO of Accurate Clinical Research, and we are here today to talk about the benefits of clinical research. How are you doing today, Karen? Doing quite well. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and we'll also talk about Accurate Clinical Research and what that is. I'm Karen Obmasis. I've actually been in the research industry for 20 years. Five years ago, I joined forces with some of the greatest rheumatologists in the state of Texas. We formed Accurate Clinical Research, and what we do is rheumatic disease studies. And rheumatic disease, we focus on lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, psoriatic arthritis, and some other types of diseases as well. Our company is completely grant funded. We're funded by the pharmaceutical companies. And what that means is there's no cost to our patients. What our foundation is of our company is hope. What we're doing is providing tomorrow's treatments today. Our patients have other choices. The rheumatologists that I work with, they want it to be able to offer their patients other options. Sometimes they get to the end of the line with the treatments that are on the market. So the next step is the clinical phases. And that's where our company comes in. We partner with the physicians within their practices. We have three locations. Katie will be opening soon, one that's on the outskirts of Pasadena in Houston. And then we also have one in NASA Bay. My office that is in Houston is probably the largest lupus research center We have 10 clinical trials for lupus alone. That's a lot. It gives other options. There is only one drug in 50 years that has been approved. We were part of that team. So our patients were able to be on that treatment seven years prior to marketing. So our patients are still on that. So it's hope. We give hope. That's the foundation of this company. Wonderful. Now, how many physicians do you have working with you? I have 20 physicians, three main physicians that work with me as PIs, principal investigators. The other physicians work with us as sub-eyes. They wanted to be able to offer these treatments to their patients, so they came on board with us as well. My main principal investigators, first one is Dr. Philip Waller. The second one is Dr. Prashat Sankaretti. The third one is Dr. Sabim Najam. And what that means when I say investigators, they have taken on the responsibility of running the studies. They're on the cutting edge. They're able to offer more to their patients. The other physicians come in, so they're working under their directions. It offers so much more to their patients. When we're talking about treatment for lupus, there's only one drug, and it's been 50 years, and all these years, only one drug. Clinical trials and clinical research is so important, but it's still scary to think of that because it's research. So why is that so important? We're able to offer more to our patients. Clinical research is scary. There's the option this medication will not work. There's the option that you may not get any benefits from it. But there's no other option for you, so why not try it? And maybe it won't work for you, but it could work for the next generation. It could work for your children. It could work for your grandchildren. Going into clinical studies, it's kind of like it's scary to drive the streets of Houston. So don't do it. That's silly. Going into clinical studies, every drug that's on the market now has to go through these phases. FDA in the United States, it can take 10 to 15 years before a medication hits the market. Going into clinical trials, you're a part of that. You're a part of that solution. You are our heroes. Because of people that volunteer for these clinical trials, we're able to see the new treatments that are out there. It's amazing. I am so thankful every day for the patients that actually go into these studies. And I tell them that personally. I go in the rooms and I say, I really appreciate you being a part of this. And they're like, no, you're helping me. And I said, no, you're helping us. That's the foundation. People that are hoping that we can help them to feel better, to make their life better. And we really do hope that we can do that. But if it doesn't work, we've got some of our answers. And maybe they need to change the compound a little bit. 
so it can work for the next generation. So what about safety? Because drugs can be a scary thing as well and not knowing how the body's going to react and whether it's actually going to treat what you need it to treat. Safety factors, we are under such regulations. We have to follow the FDA guidelines. We also have the Institutional Review Board and the review boards are set up to protect patients. With the review board, we have to send them reports. We have to let them know if there's any adverse events. If we have a serious adverse event, say somebody has a heart attack or a stroke, we have to report that in less than 24 hours. And you know how fast that is? That means every person that is participating in this study, any physician all over the United States, if it's an international study, they're notified. Everybody knows we are very, very watched by our upper organizations, which we should be. Right, because you want to make sure that you are not only helping people, but doing it correctly and following protocol. Right, right. and we do follow the protocol to a T. If we didn't, our company would be closed. Right. Talk to us about participating and what it's like to actually be a patient in a clinical study or trial. Most of our patients, before we do any activities that are related to research, they're given a consent to read. The consent form explains everything in a very detailed step-by-step manner. Once the patient reads that, my study team will go over and answer any questions or concerns that they may have. Once they go through that process, if they want to meet with the MDs and go over some of the questions and the concerns, they are. The next step is when we start the lab processing, we do the testing that is required. Once we get the safety labs back, so we make sure there's no other activity going on, they meet all the criteria, then they're, they randomize to the medication. It's not like we give them the medicine and say, see you later, bye-bye. They have to come back in. And it's usually weekly in the beginning. Sometimes it's daily, depending on what phase of the study we're in. Labs are checked. They see the MD. Everything is watched extremely closely. As they're in the study and it, it goes on a little bit longer, their visits get farther apart. We have some trials that are long-term. They've been going on for five years. Those patients come in monthly. It's just like your normal doctor's visit but you see your research team more than you would your practice because you come in more often. Whenever you are participating in clinical trials, you're included in this and you're getting medication, but you're taken care of, right? Like you said, you're not given medication and see in a year. What if other things come up, like other health issues while you're doing this study or this research? You are brought in. If you called my office and and said, I have a rash, it just showed up today, I would get you in to see one of my MDs within an hour to do an assessment and to make sure. You become so close with the research team, it's kind of like your extension of their family. They they come in, they know about your family, they know about your wife or your husband or your children, and they really care about you as a human being. So to see that, it's amazing. When you go into a clinic setting, most of your physicians, you go in, you get 15 minutes, and then you go away. Most research patients are in to see us for about an hour to an hour and a half. So everything is done in such detail. Everything is documented. Minoxidil, when that was first under clinical studies, it was actually an antihypertensive medication, high blood pressure. One of the side effects of minoxidil was uh, fine, darkened hair started to grow on some of the patients. But that was documented. Now, most people know minoxidil is used for hair growth. Sometimes when we do clinical research, we're looking for one answer and we may find a new answer. Right. We hear that. Botox is the first thing that comes to mind because I know it's used for migraines. Exactly. And I participated in a, in a study for headaches when I was you know, 17 or 18 yeah. with Botox. And I have no idea if I got the real thing or not <laughs> because it was a controlled study where right. there was a placebo. But it's so cool. There are so many other things and uses for medications. And, and that's how they come about is through... Right through clinical trials and research. Right. And that's why everything is documented. We tell our patients all the time. They'll say, oh, I stumped my toe or something. And I say, well, we really have to know that too. And they're like, really? Yep, we Everything, do. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so important, everything that, that you're doing when you participate. You, you are our heroes. You deserve the respect that we give. And it's because of people that volunteer for clinical trials. We have what we have. Now, I'm going to reach out to our minorities 
we need you in clinical studies. We need to get that data in. A lot of our clinical studies, we have less than 1% minorities that volunteer for these studies. We need you. If I can reach out and touch four people, volunteer to be in a clinical trial, if not with my organization, with another one. Not only they're heroes, but they're getting help, right? Yeah. It may be something that is helping you. So it's a win for everyone. What trials are you um, currently looking for people to participate in and that you have going on? I'm going to first start with lupus. I have nine different lupus trials going on at uh, all three of my facilities, different types of trials, not the exact same one. We do rheumatoid arthritis. We have several of those. We have gout going on right now. We have psoriatic arthritis going on right now. My website, www.accurateclinicalresearch.com. Visit that, get into my system, and then I can have my staff call and filter you out into the facilities that have the actual trials that you can participate in. But if I don't have it, for example, we also do diabetes. If I don't have it today, tomorrow's a new day. I am constantly getting in new trials. So if you can get into our system, I'll be able to call you, and you have the option to say yes or no. It's always ongoing, and new stuff comes up all the time, so you're always looking for people. Is there like a, a certain age range of people that you only take, or what are the qualifications? We are only adults, so we do start at the age of 18, and most of our trials goes up to 85. Okay, and then you mentioned that minorities are something that you need more people to participate in. Correct. Okay. Correct. All walks are life, male, female, every denomination you could possibly, just be a part of it. Give us the website one more time. It's accurateclinicalresearch.com. Okay. And is that also where they can find out more information on what the trials are and what all you have going on? Sure. You can also call our corporate office, and that number is 281-481-8557, 281-481-8557. Website is accurateclinicalresearch.com. If you call my main corporate office, we'll be able to filter you out into the which one. Yeah, and, the, and the patients can say, I live in Katy. So I would give you my Katy office. If I don't have the trial there, I do provide transportation as well. So we do drive out to College Station and bring patients in. All of that is under the grant. We go the extra mile to bring them in. You know, when I have a 20-year-old saying, people just don't understand lupus. They don't know what I'm going through. And then they say, and I don't have a ride because my mom's working. It's so nice to say, I'll send a, a car to get you and, yeah. and bring you in. That's awesome. It's a wonderful thing that you're doing for everyone. And what about insurance? No, it doesn't matter. Insurance doesn't matter. Our company Pay. is completely grant funded. So there, there's no cost to our patients. We have to go through a criteria. We do follow protocol. We have to make sure you qualify for the trial. If you do qualify, and when I say qualify, it's not a financial thing. Qualifying is, do you have the right lab values that we're looking at? Do you have the diagnosis that we're looking at? Are you severe enough? And with those qualifications, we bring you in and you go in. And it's completely grant funded. We're funded by the pharmaceutical company. Our company has never charged any of our patients to come in and be seen. Wonderful. And thank you for the work that you do, because it seems like such a wonderful thing for you to be able to go home every day and know that you do this wonderful work. I'm sure that's something that weighs on your heart and that it's a wonderful thing. Thank you. It really is. I've been doing this for, for so long, and it's because I have a passion. And I have a passion for trying to help find better treatments out there. And my physicians have the same passion. So we have a really great team of professionals that work with us. Wonderful. Is there anything else you wanted to mention that we didn't get to talk about yet? Be a part of research. Reach out. Find out what you can do. I always say research is never important until it affects you. And when it starts to affect you, then you realize maybe we should do more. That's absolutely so true. Thank you so much, Karen, for coming in. Thank you. To Karen Obmasis, president and founder of Accurate Clinical Research, thanks for joining us on Houston Weekend Magazine. I'm Mystic Matthews.